Hi, good morning, everyone. Uh, we are live on 137th Semao International Weekly Meeting. Uh, we are meeting every Saturday to discuss on a common topic, which is uh, we are facing a regular problem. We are facing uh, doubts. And today we have a very, very important topic. It's on sudden cardiac death. We've all seen recently a lot of early deaths, a lot of teen teenager deaths, which are happening, a lot of deaths which are happening in the while doing functional trainings and all that stuff. So today we have a very eminent speaker, Padma Shri Dr. Mohsin Wali. Uh, we have, uh, to introduce him, we have uh, uh, Padma Shri Dr. Uh, uh, Wali is highly accomplished and well sought physician. He served as a full-time physician for President of India, Mr. Venkat Raman, Mr. Shankar Dayal Sharma. Beside, he was also been appointed to serve as a family of President Dr. Zakir Hussain. He was born in 1953 in Uttar Pradesh in India and was selected by UPMC, both as a specialist and a consultant for a medicine in post-grad Institute of Medical Research and Education, attached to Dr. Ram Manohar Lohia Hospital in New Delhi. He's the only clinician in India formally trained. He is also been instrumental in launching the medicine in India, uh, Jatric Medicine India through Faculty of Jatric Medicine and Arbor University of Michigan, USA. He's the only trained doctor in water treatment and dialysis at Germany at thought of uh, unitary efforts of quality of dialysis in India to improve the remarkable standards. He has contributed his uh, achievements by the sizable number of books, chapters, and uh, journals. I would like to invite him for a very important topic. Over to you, Dr. Wali. Thank you, Saurabh, for your kind words. Uh, I congratulate you for continuing the legacy of our friend, our mentor, and a God-gifted human being, Dr. K. K. Garwal, and our salutations to him. And congratulations for uh, bringing ahead his mission through Heart Care Foundation of India and CMAO's 137th event today as we have. And uh, I would respectfully uh, uh, say my good wishes and my uh, salutations and good morning to you and your <coughs> all present, like Dr. Vasit Pazi, Dr. Chongoy, and Dr. Hussain, Dr. Monica joining from US. And uh, sudden cardiac deaths, as you have rightly said, is a wonderful thing to know and to follow in the rest of our career because it's troubling us. A little heart on the drug level means the price could cause cardiac arrest. This is just a cartoon. But cardiac arrest is happening more frequently than we have seen in the past. And the reasons could be any, the reasons could be more awareness or post-COVID scenario could be any. And uh, just as we know, uh, sudden cardiac death, uh, because uh, we, we, we see that cardiac rhythm irregularities, they, they, they become very prominent during this and uh, I hope I am audible beyond the voice of the presentation. So, the rhythm of the heart becomes erratic, the beating of the heart becomes erratic, and the uh, muscle contractions of the heart become erratic, which we know arrhythmias develop, and we know many arrhythmias which can be precursor to sudden cardiac death. As we all know, this is not synonymous uh, with acute heart attack. So. Uh, we have to just differentiate in terms of time. Uh, sudden cardiac death does not give us time, while acute heart attack gives us time, and we can manage the patient, revascularize the patient. So it happens without warning, without the person feeling any signs that something is about to happen, but it just happens. So when it just happens, it is a it's a test of our skills, the test of skills uh, present around. So 
sudden cardiac death is an unexpected death due to cardiac causes that occurs in a short time period, generally within one hour of the symptom onset. Normally, we say it gives us roughly 10 minutes or less in a person who is known or unknown having cardiac disease. Then patient at risk for sudden cardiac death may have prodromes of chest pain, which they ignore, fatigue, palpitations, and other non-specific complaints. Two-thirds of the cardiac arrests occur Mm, uh, and they are clinically manifested uh, as a first clinically manifested event in the clinical setting of a known disease in the absence of a strong risk factors. And 25% of the victims have high risk markers, arrhythmogenic or hemodynamic, which can be both. And general patterns of heightened risk during the morning hours on Mondays. Uh, and during the winter months, as we see all, all over the world now, they have been described. So <clears throat> if you see the chronology, as I have said, it could be chest pain, palpitations, dyspnea, fatigability, leading to arrhythmia, hypotension, chest pain, again, dyspnea and lightheadedness, loss of effective circulation of the blood and loss of consciousness. There could be biological death, after the cardiac arrest, or we can resuscitate and manage. So it's not a random event. Most victims do have pre-existing heart disease or other health problems. And uh, I have a family in which four people have got obstructive cardiomyopathy, and one young boy came to me three days back, and he had arrhythmia and sinus pauses. So as many as 75% of the people who die of sudden cardiac arrest show signs of a previous heart attack or cardiac event. 80% have signs of coronary artery disease. So approximately 92% of those who experience uh, sudden cardiac arrest because of lack of medical facilities available don't survive, unfortunately. So we have to work hard in this direction. And it kills more than 1,000 people a day or more, or 1% every 90 seconds. We have lost many prominent people in India and outside India. This was our very important uh, actor, Siddhant, then our anchor, Rohit, then <clears throat> another Siddhant Shukla. And this is a video I could get a Lebanese singer, Majida Al Rumi, fainted during the Jarash festival performance, and uh, she was just spotted <laughs> getting unbalanced, and she ultimately fell down. And uh, she had this event of sudden cardiac arrest. So all these events, uh, these things are happening while people are performing on the stage in India, and uh, many places beyond that they were performing, and uh, they were captured on the TV. Our Kalam Sab also had similar kind of thing. And when I came to Delhi, I was very junior doctor, General B.C. Joshi, a collapse playing the golf in the golf course. And he was very meticulously checked every day. So what I mean to say that the incidence of sudden cardiac death increases markedly with many factors, like uh, regardless of sex, but with age. Uh, uh, sometimes, uh, but normally it is being seen as sort of told me in the young, young age. And uh, CHD is the most common substrate underlying sudden cardiac arrest or sudden cardiac death. And post myocardial scarring also can lead to it. And many other things uh, uh, leading to delayed risks. What we know as congenital long QT interval syndromes, genetically based primary arrhythmia disorders, short QT syndrome, Borgwara syndrome, the most uh, commonly talked about, idiopathic ventricular tachycardia, ventricular fibrillation, which could be catecholaminogenic and polymorphic, and inherited structural disorders with arrhythmogenic potential, like hypertrophic cardiomyopathy, right ventricular dysplasia or cardiomyopathy, another subtype, and uh, genetic predispositions. We are working hard on that direction. Uh, could be genetic, uh, uh, a drug-induced, uh, superimposed drug-induced acquired long QT, <coughs> precipitated by drugs, uh, electrolyte imbalance, and any many other things. So the risk factors could be genetic, 
CHD risk factors, arrhythmias, nutritional, sometimes psychological factors, exertion, <coughs> sorry, power markers. Uh, so if we summarize that uh, uh, either we go on this side of uh, CHD or CHF and could be a old fibrous scar, hypertrophic fibrous scar, altered calcium chain regulations, then it all triggers to one common disorder, sudden cardiac death. Our heart is like a machine, and this machine has to work perfectly, as I say, from the womb of the mother till the last day of our life, the heart keeps beating and doesn't go on leave. <clears throat> this is a perfect machine which keeps us active, alive, and going, and the heart adapts to our needs. Sometimes it breaks down, and then we have this scenario of this kind, either in the office or while playing. So sudden cardiac death is the silent killer. And uh, it kills roughly, as per data available, 8 lakh, 800,000 people each year. And we have to be geared up. And uh, in countries like Singapore and USA, from where you are listening to my talk, you are already well geared up. And we are also trying to uh, do many things to fight this menace. The life can be saved. The coronary artery disease causes 80% of the sudden cardiac death cases. In the young, it may be caused by a genetic disease, as I said, some syndromes I have enumerated. When an athlete dies, medicine has failed, we can say that. Public awareness, therefore, is of utmost important, importance, and especially after COVID, how much exercise to do. That has to be learned by people, especially youngsters, the executives of companies, and so on. And uh, we have to really advise people how to go about exercise and preventive measures because to some extent I would say it is preventable and uh, the prevention starts much early like putting smoking, having healthy diet, avoiding junk food. So these are the various cartoons I have made just for the people who are not medical also because I keep telling my patients also and uh, <clears throat> therefore prevention of sudden cardiac death requires a global approach. So we only talk about SCD when an uh, elite athlete uh, dies, but in day-to-day -day practice, we have to be geared up. So more research is being done on the preventive side, and we are successfully approaching to various measures, and uh, we have developed modalities to save lives, and it's all about first 10 minutes. So you know, while I'm talking, I'll just say to impress people that uh, many people have uh, died uh, during this talk. Some of them may be youngsters. So in the events category, when we chart it in general population, uh, in high risk groups, prior coronary event groups, ejection fraction, that's the heart failure with low ejection fraction, cardiac arrest survivors, arrhythmia risk markers, post myocardial infarction, the incidence rises. So this is a chart which says that in the young age and in the <clears throat> uh, advanced age, uh, say 45 to 60, there could be a different cat of categories with the risk increasing, like we have to look for myocarditis, hypertrophic cardiomyopathy, long QT syndromes, right ventricular dysplasia, anomalous coronary artery, or water syndrome, idiopathic ventricular fibrillation, while at the age more than 45, beyond uh, 45, 50, 60 would be coronary atherosclerosis, known for the first time, dilated cardiomyopathy. We have a lot of people walking on the road in India with dilated cardiomyopathy, infiltrative heart diseases, and valvular heart disease. So, if we see in the <clears throat> males and females, there's a difference of uh, risk factors. Uh, CAD pronounced more in uh, males, uh, while dilated cardiomyopathy and uh, RV dysplasia, long QT, congenital, and coronary artery spasm more in the females. So we have to be very vigilant while we are attending these cases. 
Uh, if we see in Indian perspective, uh, this is one of the uh, our hospitals uh, data. Uh, it's not very recent, but it's about uh, more than five years old. So annual incidence of uh, cervical cardiac arrest is 0 0.5 per thousand population, which accounts for 50% of the cardiovascular deaths in India. And as this has to be changed now, the peak age of SCA occurrences between, uh, uh, I would say now, 25 to 75 years and the survival rate of uh, with less than 1%. There was a <clears throat> South Indian study similarly, which shows also about similar results. And uh, in this study, CAD was observed in 66 and MI was in 33, like uh, 38 and uh, roughly 18%. So we can say, based on the statistics, that uh, the topic which we have covered today contributes to 10, roughly 10% 10 of the overall cardiovascular mortality. And uh, uh, certain cardiac death cases were five to eight years younger. Now we say 10 years younger as compared to the population in the Western world. And therefore, we have some more modifiable risk factors apart from age and uh, family history, male gender, genetic disorders, which are non-modifiable. We have a smoking, hyperlipidemia, obesity, sedentary lifestyle, hypertension, diabetes, and renal dysfunction, which Dr. K. K. Agarwal always used to tell us that prevent cardiovascular deaths by attacking these all modifiable risk factors. And he was very keen to talk about uh, <clears throat> beyond cardiac arrhythmias, coronary artery disease, uh, he was very keen to demonstrate and talk about and his mission, I can say, was to teach people uh, how to revive a patient who had sudden cardiac arrest and uh, this was uh, his mission and CPR and he used to talk about CPR to the extent that uh, we should be really uh, submerged to learn everybody in schools, in police used to give demonstrations. So. These are all ECG markers which we can spot on routine. And uh, there are certain nutritional factors. <clears throat> the young generation is now consuming a lot of alcohol and this uh, predisposes. Uh, and uh, the diet should be looked for good magnesium content and uh, smoking and alcohol should be uh, talked about to the people and psychosocial. Uh, Post-COVID, these factors have become important in low socioeconomic strata and depression, anxiety. A lot of social isolation is being seen, stress generated by change in scenario of the working atmosphere. And uh, these are all you know that these are certain biomarkers in which we are talking more about this. IL-1, IL-6, CRP is very commonly tested now, BNP and anti-pro BNP and statin C is also included. So this is a wonderful place to save life if you can wheel the patient on time in the cath lab. So we can do a, a little bit of uh, uh, maneuvering and immediately uh, implantation of pacemaker, attend the malignant arrhythmias and uh, uh, this uh, in big cities is always available provided we move the patient on the right time. Now, I was talk talking about all this, so just to keep the talk short, prevention of sudden cardiac death, the young adults should focus on evaluation of causes known to be associated with sudden unexplained deaths, like primary arrhythmia, malignant arrhythmias, ventricular arrhythmias, in those less than 35 years and with an emphasis on atherosclerotic coronary artery disease in more than 35 years of age. And this is what I was giving a tribute to Dr. KK. And this should be our mission. And this talk, if uh, we carry this, uh, this message home, this is what he used to talk. Access, awareness, education. And uh, this is just uh, dynamically showing the circulation. And uh, just uh, I put this for to talk uh, in the doctors who are not uh, senior doctors like you, but uh, this cartoon I liked in this video. And this shows very finely if we observe that uh, cardiac rhythm <coughs> changes 
and then when this cardiac rhythm changes the blood circulation changes and then we we have to go for uh, cpr and this cpr is to be learned and this is what we uh, have learned from dr kk always he used to teach us how to give correct how to correctly give cpr and this is this was his mission many advances have been made and uh, many european countries have now uh, uh, shown that uh, how we can save life by uh, uh, assistance uh, uh, taken by uh, now wearable devices up to the medical drones uh, which supply the defibrillator uh, at the place uh, in a very short span of time and the next video i have selected this is very close to my heart and uh, we must see this video just to revise how quickly this can be done so this is jona his father collapses in a in a in a social at a social place and then she calls 911 and uh, then the system gets activated and this is not very new video but i always show this at the end of my talk so how promptly we can do this how smartly we can do this and how uh, saving the time we can take the help of drones now and uh, we are saying now that we should keep all these defibrillators portable defibrillators at the places of public interest so the drone arrives with a defib and uh, now she moves and she gets connected to the central station and they demo um, they demo it and they can monitor from the remote <laughs> station and uh, life is being saved and this is how we can teach this to a common person and uh, this is the future of saving lives of sudden cardiac death and uh, i always like this video so i have shown this video this is very exciting to watch you must uh, many of you must have watched this video is a famous online video for dealing this so she gets instructions from the remote and uh, the life is saved <clears throat> when whole a whole of this is controlled from a remote station so what we can say that uh, just uh, i was told at a very short notice i wanted to pay my tributes to this great man and i again at the end pay my tributes to dr kk and and uh, uh, we this uh, we can say that uh, heart care foundation and chimao under able leadership of saurabh and all of you senior people like dr chong dr wasik kazi dr monica dr sen and all our team should carry forward this mission to india and to the world that uh, a life can be saved and we it is the high time post covid that uh, such incidences will increase and we have to be trained for geared up rather to be uh, prevention to the prevention of sudden cardiac death i am very happy to say that the hospital where i am working at all the nursing stations at all the floors at all the opds uh, our defibrillators portable defibrillators are installed and uh, once or twice we have used them and saved lives thank you very much thank you dr pali it was an excellent uh... Uh, presentation and knowledge and uh, so this is dr wali and who works with a very prestigious hospital in india which i missed out the name was gangaram hospital and a very well known hospital for uh, cardiac treatments um, can we close the slide sir <clears throat> so i also um, welcome all the medical associations yeah. from simao uh, sir before we can move forward i would like to highlight what dr kk used to say he had a formula of 10 for cpr uh cpr is for saving lives after death uh you can save the life within the 10 minutes because your brain is alive uh so the formula he created for the general public because when you are when you see suddenly somebody who is very close to your heart 
uh, you get panic and you don't remember what you need to do. So that is where, you know, he created a formula for everyone to remember in Hindi and English, but I will say it in English right now. To revive after sudden cardiac arrest, within 10 minutes of cardiac arrest, earlier the better. For the next at least 10 minutes, compress the center of the chest by at least 2 inches, continuously and effectively with a speed of 10 into 10 per minute. That will save the life of the person. Exactly. So, uh, <clears throat> memories. Uh, I would like to invite Dr. Chong, our chair, uh, to start the session with the question answers. And we have a lot of questions, and I don't think 30 minutes would be enough for us to get all the answers. So we will have a follow-up session. Over to you. Thank you, Dr. Wali, and uh, uh, brilliant uh, presentation. Um, yeah, I think sudden cardiac death is, uh, is, is everywhere. Uh, in Singapore, we have about 1,000 a year. And post-mortem shows that about 80% is coronary artery disease. But the other 20%, the hearts are structurally normal. So I was wondering whether um, is, is that uh, similar to, to what you experience um, back home in your own uh, city? Yes, Dr. Zhang, it's, uh, it's similar mostly. But our problem is that uh, people do not know uh, the pre-existing cardiac conditions. Many of our youngsters who are playing, they, they are having hypertrophic cardiomyopathy and they go out and, and uh, I, I was talking about a family in which they were very well to do and they got whole family, uh, uh, whole family, uh, whole family investigated and all genetic markers were studied and they know exactly what kind of uh, cardiomyopathy this uh, family is having. And uh, three days back, uh, the young boy who, who had driven in front of his father at a fast pace came with atrial fibrillation for the first time. So I, I did not waste time. I put, uh, after doing the ECG, which showed atrial fibrillation, I, I put Holter on him and I could diagnose the condition. And now I'm uh, just wrapping him for putting the ventricular device. So, so we, we do have similar patterns, sir, uh, you have rightly pointed out. We also see something very interesting here in Singapore called the Brugada syndrome. And uh, it, we first came to our attention, uh, I think about 20 years ago, when we had a lot of uh, Thai foreign workers working in Singapore. And these Thai foreign workers would collapse suddenly, uh, you know, unexpectedly, of course, sudden death. And uh, a lot of them were actually, in, in the end, found to have the Brugada syndrome. Do you have uh, such an experience in your home country or city? Yes, occasionally we do. We do have uh, also. Uh, we have more cases of white QRS uh, complex uh, uh, ECGs and more of cardiomyopathies, more of post scarring. But uh, arrhythmias, yes, uh, we do have uh, Pargoda short QT. Uh, our uh, young doctors also diagnose uh, in our hospitals and they isolate these patients and uh, we subject them for all detailed testing, sir. Okay, thank you. Thank you, uh, Dr. Wali. And now, Dr. Akta. Uh, hi, good morning, Chong. Thank you so much for giving me the opportunity. Uh, mashallah, uh, Dr. Wali, it was an excellent presentation. I have a few queries here in your experience. Uh, sudden cardiac death in autopsy what are the common causes you find because uh, it's an honest non-specific but uh, i'm sure in your long experience what are the common finding you have the other small thing is you mentioned your presentation monday mostly happen in the morning can you elaborate a little bit on that <laughs> to clarity Thank Monday you. is the uh, adrenergic theta. <laughs> uh, Monday blues and uh, that precipitates uh, more rhythm disorders. That's how we, we have found in that South Indian city. And uh, this was coincidental. And uh, as uh, you were mentioning about autopsies, in India, we don't have much autopsies. Uh, that's unfortunate part of the story. But we should uh, have more autopsies uh, to know exactly what are the anatomical variations, if any, 
in the sudden deaths. And recently it has provoked in India that many people, many important people, young executives, uh, people working as CEOs in corporate, uh, they have suddenly died. And uh, this uh, young uh, um, anchor, which I had shown, he was very regular for Jimmy. And he was a fit person um, uh, in one of the most commonly seen channel in India, Ashtak. And uh, then he suddenly dies. Uh, so this all has provoked us uh, that we should go for uh, more for autopsies, post certain cardiac deaths, and we should isolate the causes in the different groups of populations. But a large number is still would come out if we do autopsies, the low ejection fraction, heart failures, and uh, post myocardial scaring. You would be surprised to know that in India, due to lack of resources, people with triple vessel block and uh, triple vessel disease. With previous myocardial scarring, they keep walking on the roads and they do somehow develop collaterals and they live for more than two decades. I have many poor patients uh, who are less resourceful and they develop good collaterals, but they can have a sudden cardiac event if there is a myocardial scarring present. So this all would be very, very importantly uh, dealt with post autopsies and uh, uh, we should rather, uh, I would say that our organization should uh, send a message to our authorities that uh, we should uh, make the autopsies compulsory in cases who die unexpectedly due to sudden cardiac deaths. Dr. Jamka, you have a question? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Nice lecture, <clears throat> Dr. Wali. Uh, what are the incidences of uh, sudden cardiac arrest in Maybe ventricular tachycardia and other arrhythmias? Many times these arrhythmias are missed. And uh, many times people don't get sir, uh, immediate attention and reach on time to the hospital. And by the time they reach hospital, they are declared dead. But in good places in where there are alert physicians, they, they, they do offer CPR and save many lives. So, as I said, one in thousand roughly would be the statistics now post COVID, which is slightly higher than what we used to have. That's all I have information with me, but I always encourage people to be cautious. And one modality is which we have probably uh, not uh, promoted much in the, during these days of coronary angiography that uh, holter monitoring. I also talk more about holter monitoring to my colleagues, to the patients, explain them, and to get it repeated on time when it is due next time. So we can isolate many cases of long pauses, abnormal arrhythmias, and ventricular arrhythmias. And we do get such information after doing careful holter examinations. And after COVID, do you think uh, there is increased incidence of cardiac arrest? Certainly, maybe, yes. Maybe Certainly, yes, sir. Thrombotic phenomena was... Yes, uh, because we are seeing pro-thrombotic, uh, post-thrombotic both. And uh, we, in fact, first case when COVID started, I remember, sir, unbelievably, I, I would uh, say that uh, the lady, young lady came <clears throat> with a gangrene and a lot of abnormal markers and heart was normal. And probably that was the case uh, who had a uh, thrombotic episode of COVID. And uh, uh, simply we are managing these cases. I have a lot of cases whom I have treated during COVID. So we monitor them uh, uh, regularly by seeing the CRP. Uh, this is the common test I am advising. And I find uh, many abnormalities and then I subject them to detailed uh, testing. Uh, roughly after COVID, how many patients of sudden cardiac arrest you have seen they were they had suffered from COVID? Sir, we have documented many youngsters uh, and performers uh, you must have seen in the news also. Uh, the incidence definitely, as you asked in the first part of question, has gone up. Same, we have seen diabetes has gone up, PAD diagnosis is more. 
but uh, the underlying causes which these youngsters have uh, uh, they have uh, uh, cardiomyopathy uh, and uh, uh, this uh, uh, there is a change in this lifestyle a lot of people are opting for gym <clears throat> so uh, we have started telling them that don't do ungraded unsupervised exercise because of this reason and uh, they are now listening to us and uh, uh, they are not running and they are not uh, unmonitored, not doing unmonitored exercises. So this is how we are trying to educate our population. Thank you, Dr. Wally. Dr. Wally, um, what are your thoughts on, uh, you know, this sudden death uh, that we see in athletes, uh, uh, as in um, uh, a recent incident in America, I think Monica would know this, uh, uh, NFL footballer was hit in the chest and uh, he just collapsed. Uh, sort of blunt trauma to the myocardium. What are your thoughts on that? Thank you. Concoction. Concoction. Yes. Concussion. Yeah. Yes. Uh, uh, this uh, footballer, I would say, uh, was not 100% uh, true, but this is a very important phenomenon, as you rightly pointed out. Without this, the stock would be incomplete. Uh, this cardiac concussion is a sudden hit to the chest and uh, <clears throat> sufficient enough to provoke the cardiac arrhythmia. The hit should be such that it should uh, travel through the chest wall, uh, travels through the uh, outside of the heart and hit the myocardium and provoking a traumatic arrhythmia. I can say just to explain myself, it's, it's just like a trauma to the heart and it has also been seen in past in many cases and uh, this uh, footballer's incidence made it more uh, prominent, so we spread our hearts and we revised uh, how it happens and various mechanisms were understood. So basically, yes, it is one of the very, very important uh, uh, cause of sudden cardiac death. And uh, my professor, I would remember that uh, this was taught, uh, he used to teach us from a cardiac textbook, uh, Paul Wood's textbook of cardiology and Professor Ram Singh, I recall when I was a third year medical student. And he used to mention this, that what is athlete's heart? <laughs> athlete's heart, now we know in detail what's athlete's heart. And at the top of it, concoxocardia or myocardial concoction is a very important thing to remember and uh, to understand the physiology in detail and how it happens, how it affects the calcium channels and how it affects the cardiac metabolism suddenly at this fraction of second and uh, this is very important to remember and to talk about. I, I Sorry, I missed uh, this part and I will definitely incorporate uh, this uh, in my next presentation. Thank you very much, sir. I'm indeed grateful. Yes, commotio cordis, that's right. Commotio cordis, And I remember yes. reading that the hit it occurs at a certain part of the um, cardiac cycle, actually just I think just before the T wave or the S T yes, area yes, or something, yes, something like yes, that. Sir. Yeah. Yes, sir. And and it is very unfortunate that it hits at exactly at that exactly part at that cycle. part of the cardiac cycle and ECG. <laughs> and this is a superimposition of doom. Sir, uh, just one question. In in this case, when the when the ball or something hits your heart, I know in electric shock the CPR works almost hundred percent. Does CPR works on this also like 100% because your heart was perfectly fine? You don't have any problem with your body. It's just because of one episode, your heart stopped functioning. Does the CPR works on this 100% as well? It should work. It should work uh, uh, provided the nature of the impact and the intensity of the impact is tolerable. It should work. Dr. Wali, I also understand that sometimes when uh, these events happen on the field, on the field because they are in such a high adrenergic state, these, these players, that when a collapse occurs, actually it's quite hard to resuscitate them. Is that true? Yes, uh, because the commotion is such and the panic is great. So like we had uh, many events uh, in performers, uh, one young man was performing at Ramlila, one other young man was singing one other young man was performing the role of uh, goddess Savitri and they just collapsed and the earlier part of their death was thought to be part of their presentation at this stage and this was very misleading and this has happened in more than three cases 
and people thought this part when the person collapses is part of his performance and they did not pay attention unlike the singer which i had shown she collapses and somebody holds her and takes her in other case when this our singer was singing the stadium was jam packed and people thought he is suffocating he is having air hunger and he is not getting enough oxygen so people tried to move him in a manner as if he was not a patient he was made to walk so all this we are learning day by day sir and this uh, your questions are very uh, eye opener for all of us who are involved in the assessment and treatment of these sudden cardiac deaths sir thank you yes and that's how it delays thank you dr wali and i remember uh, reading some data from the veterans administration that uh, after covid um, you know you were talking about covid related um, you know um, arrhythmias and so on. i remember reading that um, arrhythmias were increased by 70 to 80 more percent 80 percent uh, post covid um, you know pe like p um, heart attacks um, 63 percent more um, pulmonary embolism, 300% more, DVT, 200% more. Indeed, COVID is actually a very, very um, powerful uh, thrombogenic and uh, cardiogenic event. Yes, so I fully agree because it kills the yep. person with various mechanisms which we are gradually understanding. Yep. And uh, I said the first case which came to my clinic was a lady and that she had a gangrene-like presentation. At that time, COVID had just started. I don't know when we have declared COVID has started in India. We were probably a few months late. Thank you. Anybody else has any questions for uh, Professor Wali? I have a question. Please go ahead. Uh, thank you, uh, Dr. Wally. That was a fantastic uh, presentation. And I think that even not just for medical professionals um, receiving your talk, but even as people in our community, um, it has implications that are far reaching than um, just being in medicine. I think it's much more social implications. And I think this Bills, um, the football team example, and the drone example you gave are beautiful highlighting the role of bystanders, the role of available of AED recognition and training of, of people to understand when these events are happening. Uh, a public awareness, I think our work is never done. I think whenever we see a patient uh, who is at risk and just even spending a few seconds to assess their knowledge and to address knowledge gaps associated with quick resuscitation, um, I think is uh, phenomenal. You had a great presentation that highlighted all of those uh, concepts. Um, and thank you, thank you very, very much for knowing Dr. KK Agarwal and sharing his vision. Thank you. Monica, we have a QRT in police. I have been seeing the vans written quick reaction team by police. We should have a QRTs for quick resuscitation teams in medicine. And uh, with that, I thank you very much for appreciation. It was just uh, at a short notice that I could gather uh, all this. Uh, in fact, uh, as you rightly said, we have to learn the time uh, value of time and differentiate between a heart attack and SCDs, in which people hardly differentiate, and they just they think in India we have a we have a peculiar thing that when somebody dies, we think it's almighty's decisions forgetting that we could have done something more positive and that, that's that's where i i have worked in mayo clinic i have worked in michigan university and our and i have seen how alert their paramedics are and uh, i would quote when you have provoked me to quote uh, i i was in london in one of the hotels where i took former prime minister mr vp singh for treatment and i saw in the morning an ambulance in the hotel inside the hotel normally cars are not loud so i i asked the paramedic who was running uh, with a stretcher upstairs so since i could have an access so i just walked with him and he says you know one of your uh, is musicians ravi shankar is having hypertension 170 100 blood pressure and we are rushing him to the hospital and this taught me a big lesson how important to them was high blood pressure 
and how ignorant we are seeing high blood pressure our people are walking in opd with 240 120 blood pressure and saying i'm fine this is the difference this is where we have to bridge the gap people leaving medicines on the pretext that uh, medicines have finished people ignoring their blood pressure which is one of the very very important cause of uh, our operating underlying and uh, this is what you talked about public awareness is utmost important in educating people who are negligent about their health their children eating junk food uh, in front of their eyes they are seeing now we have a trend in india you may be aware that we are sleeping and our children are ordering at 2 a.m or 3 a.m in the night and in the morning we see the empty boxes of pizza and some other junk food in the morning and we just come to know that uh, the children have consumed the junk food in the night so this trend we have to really change and this is probably we have to learn how wiser people are becoming in usa and other countries and we are learning their habits and probably for the first thank you so very much dr monica when you the food is the junk food now yes <laughs> at least in india you know i see my nephew's uh, menu which has been designed by the school a reputed school in india it has pizzas, it has pastas, it has everything. And I said, when you learn from the school, then you know, no, nobody can stop you uh, eating uh, the junk food because you get into a habit of doing that. In fact, we should, we should, Dr. Agrawal, you are right. We should teach the students how a scooter was invented, why scooter was invented. <laughs> Same way the junk food is invented because of various social reasons now that the fresh food is available in india our mothers are cooking and uh, so children should be taught the importance now i would uh, uh, say in the last that our prime minister has probably uh, very rightly uh, entered into talking about millets the fibrous foods and the food of tomorrow and i was very pleased to know yesterday that the parliament canteen in india has started serving preparations of millets the man poor man's food a long back when mr george fernandes was alive i used to treat him and he would have ragi ka halwa in the morning and ragi roti and i was not aware at that time i was also very young and I was learning things, uh, uh, how the things happen in large cities, big cities like in Delhi. And since he had a, a rural background, he was consuming ragi. And then I also started promoting ragi for iron. But this was all poor man's food are very healthy. That's, that's the message at the end of this talk, I would say. So we should go back to them. And they're cheaper. And they're healthier. They're fibrous, fiber rich. and uh, they help reducing cholesterol, keeping our lipid profile healthy, and uh, probably they keep our gut healthy. It's, uh, uh, we talk about gut in many diseases now, microbiota and everything. So all this futuring together, uh, we, I thank at the end that our Prime Minister has brought this. Uh, there's the International Day of Billets uh, declared and Parliament Canteen has started serving uh, billet food articles, food items and so on and uh, probably we would save a uh, lot of uh, uh, food grain and uh, we would resort to uh, the uh, crops which we have in plenty in india and they get waste they get wasted because they are not being optimally utilized so good okay so I, I have a few questions which i have come on the social media before we can end this session and you rightly said sir millet as a brand has suddenly come up because there's a word millet, but nobody knows that millet was an old man food, poor man food. And since it is a fashionable name, so now people are ordering it and trying to see what it is. Uh, having said that, I have a few questions from the social media. One question is, are there at least any early signs to be watched and uh, to prevent the cardiac arrest? Also, is there any uh, thing to figure out whether your body has any blockage? Are there any preventive body tests to be done? I always uh, tell people to watch for unexplained rise in heartbeat, that is unexplained tachycardia, unexplained breathlessness, unexplained headache pointing towards hypertension, 
It's something which you are not uh, very much used to have. If you have these symptoms, don't ignore them. Go to a doctor, go to a good doctor, have at least an ECG, get, if, if needed, get a holter examination, get your blood pressure checked. These are probably early warnings, which we ignore, most of us. And uh, I, I would say that the doctors, I, I would say here, very, I, I have become a little emotional now. I went to one Professor Robert Kai, who was a specialist in myeloma, and who was taking history of one of my patients. And like a third year student, he sat up with the questionnaire of what we, we write in day to day in our case sheet. And I'm sure this happens all over with the good doctors that they, they do not miss important parts of the history taking. And if we have a careful history taking and we explore the cardio respiratory symptoms, probably Dr. Agrawal, you have rightly pointed out, we may not miss, we may not miss these early signs and uh, some thumping. Oh, oh, if you ask uh, the patient tells, yes, I have thumping in the chest, I have some, some uh, restlessness, or sometimes the patients get up at two o'clock in the night. And this many patients of mine tell me, yes, I have, I, I get up at two o'clock in the night and that points out to either early heart failure or paroxysmal after a dyspnea or a very early sign of incipient heart failure, left ventricular failure, and unexplained bradycardia or unexplained tachycardia in ECG. This could be very, very cost-effective and early signs which we should not miss. If a patient is having bradycardia and patient is not on beta blockers, I always explore the history further. And I do find certain cases of hypothyroidism or at least one or two cases I, I diagnosed with ECG that uh, patient is having uh, cardiomyopathy. So this, this is what uh, you are right, that inex uh, inexpensive and uh, thoughtfully asked questions from a patient, which are pointers, which probably this clinical medicine is fading day by day. And we are resorting to more investigations and investigations can miss a finding which patient's history can always tell us. So a well-taken history uh, and a well thought, to, because the, there are constraints of time in big OPDs, and crowded OPDs, we always miss some part of the history of the patient. So a carefully taken history and a, 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 the questionnaire which we are supposed to ask from every patient, we should probably get back to this old practice. And then, as you said, we can have some more cases which we can diagnose and further investigate. And in a country like India, where we have all a spectrum of uh, uh, financial status of the patients, we can probably contribute by taking a good history and we can diagnose many cases before they create sudden cardiac death. Yeah. So, two more questions. First is, uh, there was a video which got viral that every person should hold four, four or five tablets in, the, in their pocket and if they feel there is any cardiac problem, they feel there's uneasiness, they should immediately consume that tablets. So uh, can you please uh, highlight? Uh, <laughs> yes, true, there I... are many, many videos. They get viral, like you cough forcefully, you thump your chest, and you eat this all over clopidogrel aspirin. I would say, yes, talk to your doctor before keeping them in your pocket. And if you really need them, do have them. But before that, get a proper medical checkup. You see, this, this, this uh, important thing could be sometimes life-saving also till you reach to the hospital. But uh, I don't think if you have any, any contraindications to these pills like aspirin, clopidogrel, and taken in right dose, they could be harmful unless you have a bleeding ulcer or some bleeding diathesis or something contraindicated. Yes. Most importantly, I keep importance to giving more importance to the blood pressure. You see, people are ignoring blood pressure a lot these days, especially in India where the weather changes uh, we uh, by the time our body gets used to cold, summer comes. And by the time we get used to summers, winter comes. And many patients need a recalibration of doses of hypertension and many people end up in the hospital with a stroke. 
and as we are talking with reference to covid this becomes small body becomes small vulnerable in fact i suffered covid like uh, dr kk and i still have changes in my lungs i still have tachycardia when i walk fast i have ecg changes st segment depression because i have one small block so sometimes we can diagnose all these things by careful simple investigations and carefully taken history and all these spills which you are talking would be of benefit but unsupervised use of anything is not uh, would be i would not recommend okay. thank you sir so the last question is earlier we used to see the trend changing from the heart attack from you know early uh, 50s to 30s and now suddenly we have seen over the last uh, few years that people below 20 are losing their life in fact yesterday and last week there was a girl who was a doctor from indore got lost her life at the age of 16 with a cardiac arrest so is there anything uh, which like uh, you know uh, below 20 is like you know you're still young you're still not even completed your teen what's going on in this world and what is the take home message with this thank you for asking this question my profound sympathy to the family of that girl and in india we are now not talking much about valvular heart disease rheumatic heart disease rheumatic carditis rheumatic myocarditis in india we still have them and uh, as i mentioned there could be certain syndromes associated with certain cardiac that she could have one and she might have had some valvular heart disease so i have seen children growing with asds valvular heart disease and many ladies have conceived and delivered with mitral valve disease and they were not nobody kept a stethoscope on the chest and second delivery or third delivery they were diagnosed so we in india had sort of rheumatic heart disease and components associated with congenital diseases of the heart uh especially conduction system uh she is too young to have a complicated cardiomyopathy i i don't know but uh, she could be one of the categories so we should not forget to examine everybody at least listen any murmur if one has and diagnose the condition underlying and i'm sure we would learn more lessons from this sudden death of a medical person thank, thank you dr Anyone, anyone has a question? Uh, Tazi, anyone has a question over here? Any associations? Yes, uh, thank you, sir. Ab. And it was excellent presentation by Dr. Wali. And uh, I mean, uh, there uh, was a video on self CPR. My question to uh, Dr. Uh, Wali. uh what are his thoughts on it self cpr there was a video uh, on social media yes sir uh, uh, i i i have briefly mentioned about uh, if you have this kind of uh uh, uh symptom like uh, you are going away you are fainting then if you can manage to cough and put a thumb on the chest would be if that much is uh, energy is there in the body yes and uh, i will learn more about it as you pointed out and include this video also in my presentation so yes there could be something like uh, we have to stimulate the vagus nerve somehow okay thank you uh, uh, dr wali uh, you have very rightly mentioned the uh, you know the efforts dr k k agarwal has put on uh, you know importance of uh, cpr and uh, i think we uh, as uh, you know uh, medical associations we should uh, educate more aggressively on uh, public awareness uh, of cpr and i think uh, we should uh, educate for uh, putting uh, this uh, subject of cpr in the educational institutions in the curriculum of uh, you know uh, uh, the uh, educational institutions exactly. how to do proper cpr so uh, i think uh, we should uh, need to work on that uh, and it's really important 
that everybody should know how to do a proper CPR and when to do it. And uh, the use of technology coming up, like uh, you have shown an excellent video of drone delivery of uh, uh, the, uh, the information and the equipment to deal the uh, sudden uh, cardiac arrest or sudden uh, death, uh, we can uh, uh, have a, a bright future uh, in, uh, in the coming uh, years and uh, months. Uh, I think uh, we need to work on that also as medical associations, uh, as national medical associations, and from the platform of Shemao, we can always advocate for uh, you know, uh, putting in uh, the curriculum the, uh, of the uh, education system also. So that uh, from the younger age, the students, the uh, college students and school students should know. And repeatedly when they will have, uh, you know, that knowledge being uh, hammered into them, uh, they'll have a much positive uh, role in this society. Thank you, sir. Thank you for your kind words and wisdom words. In fact, sir, I think what Dr. KK also did, I want to highlight that he trained the police officers, the yes. uh, traffic police. Um, courts, courts. Yes. Oh, so these are the people who can reach your house very fast. And we were in a words of training the delivery boys because, you know, in this stage where ambulance reaches more than 30 minutes or half an hour, uh, one hour, the food gets delivered in 10 minutes. So uh, we were, you know, uh, our focus was to train all those people who can be at you, around your bystanders, uh, can give you training, uh, can give you, can save your life by CPR, train them. And CPR is something which you don't need to be a doctor. Any bystander can, can do a, a CPR. Uh, and uh, handing over to the doctor, you know, so that 10 minutes, initial 10 minutes are very important. Over to you, sir. Mm. Saurabh, uh, I, I have to apologize for not mentioning anything about obesity in oh, yeah. young. <laughs> All these delivery boys are making our children obese, uh, just I remember it is so, so proper food. Yes, I talked about junk food, we talked about junk food. So obesity is another risk factor and uh, history of snoring, as you were asking me, could be the early sign of one of the early signs of having cardiac arrhythmias. And most of our youngsters do have a snoring. So while taking history, uh, we should also take history of snoring and any abnormal uh, beating uh, that's ectopic. So we should contend sometimes if we ask those so early signs. I would add two things, uh, history of snoring and history of having abnormal beating or you know, thump in the chest, un unaware which the patient is unaware of. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. So Thank you. I learned many things through this uh, talk. So... I thank all the all the people who have uh, 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 tried to, to to ask questions to so that I scratch my mind and learn something and get provoked for learning further. Thank you very much. I'm still a student, so if I have made any mistakes in my presentation, please ignore them. Thank you very much. Mm. Um, thank you, uh, Professor Wali. And if there are no more questions for our speaker. I'd like to thank our speaker for a wonderful presentation and his uh, humility and his uh, humor <laughs> and, uh, um, you know, all the things that always uh, make us remember such a presentation so well. Um, without much further ado, thank you, everyone. And um, uh, happy Lunar New Year. Today is the first day of the actual spring itself um, at 1043 in Singapore. So... Yeah, we have just welcomed the actual new year itself, uh, according to the cycle of the moon. Um, so thank you, everyone. And we'd love to see you back here again uh, soon for another wonderful uh, presentation from another wonderful speaker. Thank you so much.